Alright, so in our first video, we showed how to set up the remote, uh, uh, SSH remote, so that we can uh, do debugging on a remote FPP device uh, using um, VS Studio Code. So now what I want to show you how to do is, uh, and that works great just with that first video for being able to do any of the web development uh, that you want to do. Uh, but now let's say I want to get into C and C++ development and uh, I want to basically be able to have a remote debugger session running but still kind of run that from my laptop so I have the full power of my editor. Um, it's pretty easy. So the first thing that we need to do is go into extensions and what we need to do is ensure that the... Uh, debugger called GDB debugger is installed. So we need to make sure it's GDB debugger dash beyond, by the way, GDB debugger dash beyond, not the original one from OAIK. Um, and also when you install this, you need to ensure that uh, you install this not only, um, or actually on your uh, FPP and your remote device as well. So um, you might, when you install it, it might show up here in the top in local, then just click on the install uh, SSH um, and it'll copy it down here. The two that I use are, I tend to use the C++ Intelligent Sense, plus I also will have the GDB debugger, which is what we're going to use today. Uh, once you install those, what you should see is we should see now off to the side, we actually have a run and debug option here. So when we start that, um, the first thing is it's like, okay, great, but we need a configuration file so that we can do the remote debugging. So what I would do is just click on this create launch.json button. And then what we want to do is we want to set up an environment for GDB beyond. Right, because that's what we're doing is some C or C++ for GDB Dion. So I'm going to click on that one. It gives us a default file here. Now I'm uh, publishing them in the readme's one that works very well with uh, FPP. So what I've done here is I basically will have two applications set up for remote debugging. I have the FPPD one set up and I also have the Cape Detect one uh, set up. Okay, uh, so what you'll see is up here now is, is now that I've saved that file in the launch and it creates it in uh, the Visual Studio Code. Uh, so it creates a directory here called Visual Studio Code and then launch. Uh, that's ignored by GitHub. So, uh, so no worries about accidentally checking that in. But now that I have that set up, I have the ability to select which one of these I would like to uh, debug. Now, before you get started, one of the most important things to do is to make sure you switch over to your terminal. And uh, inside of the source directory, you want to make sure that you compile in debug mode because otherwise it won't work very well. So you could do your make clean. Oops and then, which I'm not gonna run because I've already done this, and then your uh, make debug. Um, and, and again, if you have like a, uh, if you have, uh, you know, something with a significant number of cores, uh, you could do two or four and then make debug. I've already compiled mine with debugging turn on, so I'm not gonna run those commands, but uh, that's how you would do it. From there, it's very easy. So what you can see here, is I'll show you just super quick. You just set up some watch variables and you can set up uh, breakpoints if you want. So what I've done is I've opened up CPB, or sorry, I've opened up FPPD. And so what I did was just because I wanted to, I, if I wanted to set a breakpoint, I'm just setting one right there on just kind of the initial setup. And you can see that I've already set up a couple other breakpoints here on settings, right? And you can also set up watch variables. So what I'm gonna do for these is I'm actually going to remove uh, just one of those watch variables and then I'll show you how to set it up. But I'll also show you what happens even if you don't set up the watch variables. All right, so now I have a couple different breakpoints. I have one set up here for when it actually is loading the settings file. 
and then I just have another one here for when it goes and gets the settings file and then just to show what happens when this starts I have one right here within the main uh, where it's doing the first step which is setting up the uh, exception handlers all right so whatever variables I want whatever watch variables are here my call stack is here and my breakpoints are down here when in this mode so now that everything is done and I've compiled it for debug mode and I've selected the program that I want to debug, I can just go ahead and hit start. And it takes a minute because it's setting everything up. But now what you'll see is I see my little debug window up here. And you can also see what is done is it stopped at my first breakpoint already right here is before it does its setup handlers. Uh, so this is just like any other graphical debugger and... Uh, where I can kind of, you know, step over, step in, whatever. And so if I just do a step over, we can see that now it's set up my handlers. I see where my call stack is so that I'm on line uh, 474 of main. I can see what the local variables are here. So in this particular case, uh, you know, what my argc and argv is. So right there, we can see how it's kind of set up. I can scroll this if I need to. So that was how it was uh, run when it was started. Um, awesome. So what I'm going to do now is, of course, this is skip over. This is, you know, the, the step into and everything else and your stop. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it continue to my second breakpoint that I've set up just to show some more things here. And what we have here is you can actually see that now I'm in the load settings piece. And we can see that uh, I have both my line and you know um, variables here that are set up. Now, um, in this particular case, it's, I should be pointed out here that you'll, if I hover over this, you'll notice that uh, uh, line is basically set up currently right now as a pointer to zero, right? And if I hover over length, you'll see that it's a big random number because it hasn't finished initializing yet. Um, so what I can do is, although I can see these up in here, I can also set watch variables if I want to, right? So I had a, a watch variable set up for result, which we'll see that it'll come into place in a minute. But if I just wanted to add another watch variable here for something else like line, or it could be a global variable, it's pretty easy. I could just add an expression and then I could just type it in. And now I have the line watch variable right here as well. So if I just step over this particular one, so now line has been initiated right and uh, so it is set up and what we should have here is it's a whole bunch of zeros so that's great length still hasn't been initiated it's still that big number so what i'll do is i'll step over here and now we can see that either via the hover over right it's now 256 which is great um or and we can see it uh, up here as well because the local variables are all kind of shown by default if you expand locals you do have to expand locals for that to work okay so now what I could do is I could just kind of keep going and do whatever, you know, debugging stuff that uh, I want to do um, and see everything continue to uh, to load as is. And I see the results. I can see right there where my line changed. Right. So it was uh, 66. Right. And so I, if I hit kind of uh, continue, it's going to loop around till it comes back to this point again. Right. Uh, or sorry, I guess my bad is I forgot that was part of a loop. But then here's another breakpoint that I set up for, uh, you know, looking at the default value. And uh, so anyway, hope that helps. Like I said, it's really easy to get this uh, kind of set up, at least for doing some of the base debugging work. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know.